right hello everyone um seeing some familiar faces or names at least um thank you all for joining today um we'll get started in just a minute um we'll see if anyone else is joining us today um so in the meantime please introduce yourselves in the chat rename yourselves um to your name and where you're joining from today um and let us know who you are all right um, so I think we'll get started. I'm sure a couple more people will come join us shortly. Um, but I want to welcome you all to the Yes Art for Social Change webinar. Um, we're really excited to have you all here today uh, for this virtual event and to participate in this conversation about how art can impact social change. My name is Micah Faber, and I'm the Yes Associate Program Manager at Iron USA, and I'm joined today by my colleagues, Emma James, Bree Eisert, and our wonderful facilitators, Eris, Dunya, and Mohammed, who I will introduce momentarily. I wanna thank everyone for joining us today for what will be an engaging and open conversation on how art can impact culture and be a tool for social change. All attendees are Yes Sex or Yes Abroad alumni. So in addition to all sharing an interest in art or perhaps even being artists yourselves, another thing you have in common is that you're all alumni of the ECA exchange programs. Before we begin, let's go over a quick review of some of the Zoom features so that all attendees can participate seamlessly in today's event. We invite attendees to put in the chat or title card where you are joining us from. As you can all tell, uh, all participants have access to their microphones and cameras. We invite you to keep your cameras on throughout the webinar, but please keep yourselves muted unless you would like to speak. So this will eliminate background noise. In addition, please note that we have automatic live captioning available. You can access the live captioning by clicking the CC live transcript button on your Zoom toolbar. We also have two ASL interpreters who will be spotlighted as panelists throughout the event. We will only be recording the beginning of this webinar today as most of the event will be interactive and discussion based. The short recording will be uploaded to the Yes YouTube page and website in the next few days. At the event today, we will hear from our three facilitators about their backgrounds and experiences implementing art for social change projects in their communities worldwide. You will also have the opportunity to interact in breakout rooms and brainstorm project ideas that use artistic interventions to solve social issues. We hope you'll get a chance to meet new alumni today and be inspired to implement, implement your own art for social change projects in your communities. I'd now like to briefly introduce our expert guest speakers and facilitators for today's event. So today we're joined by Eris Hines, who is an explorer, artist, and activist. As an African and Native American identifying facilitator, Eris continues to build on his five-year background in community and youth development. As a theater teaching artist, Mr. Hines has focused, on, has focused all of his work on youth, children, and families from underrepresented communities. Mr. Hines is also a recent Peace Corps volunteer and certified English language instructor. His work as a facilitator has also allowed him to train participants on topics such as global citizenship, project management, college, college readiness, and sexual health. When not working in the field of education, Mr. Hines writes for MTV and New York's Broadway and is currently pursuing a master's degree in international education from George Washington University. So welcome, Eris. We're also joined today by Dunya, who is a YES 2015 alumna from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Dunya is having some Wi-Fi issues today, so I hope she's able to join momentarily. Um, but Dunya is currently pursuing a master's in conflict management and humanitarian action. Dunya is an active member of the YES alumni community and has implemented projects ranging from topics of interfaith harmony and environmentalism to campaigns in support of marginalized groups in their community, specifically the LGBTQIA plus community and refugees. And lastly, but not least, we are joined by Mohammed, who is a YES 2018 alumnus from Tunisia. Mohammed is a rising senior at the American University of Beirut, double majoring in media and communications and political studies. Mohammed pursued his love of art in, on his exchange year, where he participated in two musicals and competed in the International Thespian Festival. Upon returning to Tunisia, Mohammed continued acting at local theaters, where he discovered the medium's power of bridging ideological gaps, addressing taboo topics, and uniting people over their love of theater. So please join me in welcoming our three incredible facilitators today. And with no further ado, I will hand it over to them to get us started. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I hope y'all are feeling good. I hope y'all are excited about today. We're actually going to start with a Zoom poll, and I'm going to pass it over to Mohammed, who may have dropped from the call, but that's okay. So, Mohammed? Ah, 
it's like that sometimes. <laughs> We're dealing some, with some internet issues today, um, but we can certainly still launch the poll. Emma or Bree, do either of you have access to the polls? Yes, I just launched it and I see people are answering. So the first poll is, do you think art can create meaningful change? Your answers or your choices are yes, maybe, no, or I don't know. And I'm going to end the poll and share the results. Thank you, Emma. Yes, cool, this is great. 88% of yeses are, are what I was hoping to see. If I saw a lot of no's, I would have been like, oh, okay, we have some work to do, but it's, we're gonna break it, make it work. Um, so great, so this poll is just sort of, just to gauge the room, right, to sort of see how you all feel about art, how you all feel about sort of social change and how you all feel about the intersection of arts and social change. Um, so thank you for engaging in that Zoom poll. We will come back to it at the end to sort of see if there has been a shift in sort of perception, um, but that's okay. If there's no shift, that's fine. If there is a shift, great, right? We are in this together. Um, the next question that I have for you um, is a little bit more of a question to sort of hope to understand your culture, to see where you're coming from, to see what artists, what sort of musicians do you like? Um, so in the poll for me, could you please answer, what form of art or artists do you feel passionate about or inspired by? What form of art or artists do you feel passionate about or inspired by? And I'm gonna post that question in the chat as well. Ooh, thank you, Emma. Lumineers concert. Public murals, Buenos Aires. Program. Theater productions, poetry. This is great, Sophia. You'll have a chance to write a poem today. Exciting stuff. Music, live poetry, drawing and writing, music and theater, innovative art styles. Ooh, okay. Street art and painting. I love street art. I love murals as well. Music, drawing, and painting. Nice. All right, graphic designer, writing articles, drama, cool. I love how we all have sort of the same love for art, but it all sort of expresses itself differently in different formats. So I think that's really awesome. Mm, experiencing the world through the artist lens, dance, music, and drawing. All right, great. These are beautiful answers, I love it. Books as well, love me a good book. Um, I'm gonna actually move us to our next um, just icebreaker question, in which is a little bit more fun. Um, and I'm gonna give you no context. I'm not giving you any background to this question. But if you had to choose between love or money, what would you choose? And I'm gonna put that question in the chat box as well. Love or money, you can either um, <laughs> money already. <laughs> Feel free to type your answers in the chat. <laughs> Loving money. Nice. Put it together. <laughs> okay. Hypothetically love, reality, money, finances rule the world. That's a good outlook. I just want to buy plane tickets, but I guess that's a good outlook too. <laughs> Hillary, doing what you love, get you money, pick love. All right, cool. All right then, so thank you all for engaging in those icebreaker questions. I know they're all over the place, but that's what makes it fun. That's what makes art fun, just collaborative and wild and kind of crazy. Um, I am going to move us a little bit along and I'm hoping that Mohammed and Danny are able to join um, as I'm telling you a little bit about the work that I do, sort of a little bit about myself. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna sort of share sort of what I do, um, sort of how I've come to do what I do, where I've been in the past recent years. Um, so enjoy this collage of pictures. <laughs> um, but my name is Eris, and I'm a theater teaching artist, and I have been facilitating and sort of um, doing theater work since I was a senior in high school which would be about 2013. <laughs> so a little while away, um, I really began 
um, doing theater teaching artists sort of activities and sort of projects in about 2016. So I've been doing this for almost seven years um, and I've done a lot of fun and different and exciting things. Um, I got started with theater uh, as my sort of way of doing art. Uh, that is still my main way of doing art. Um, I cannot sing, so it was not musical theater, um, but I did get started with stage managing. And that's really when you are sort of leading um, the sort of production or leading the sort of show behind the scenes. You're not always on stage, but you are sort of making sure that everything is sort of coordinated properly. Um, and I loved it. After that, I went to community college and I got my acting degree and I started doing acting. Um, you see a few pictures on here. Um, the picture that actually says intersections with my name, um, that was a show that I was able to actually create from the ground up, um, which we call Devising Theater. Um, and that show was made by a few of my classmates at the time. Um, and it focused a little bit on sort of identity, but also focused on sort of figuring out the way of the world at the time, and I believe that was around 2015, so the world was a little bit different. Um, from that, I started to do more productions um, in acting. The picture right next to the intersections picture, um, that's me with some peanuts. <laughs> um, that is a show called Neighborhood 3, uh, which is a very sort of like, it's a show based on um, gaming. So there's elements of sort of uh, virtual sort of gaming, the virtual world, plus the real world. So it was very exciting. Um, right underneath that uh, is a picture of a show that I did called Send in the Clowns, uh, which was a scripted reading um, about clowns that were trying to rob a bank. So I was a clown that was trying to rob a bank. Um, so very exciting stuff. Um, with that work, I've been really able to sort of build out and branch out. Um, the picture right underneath intersections is my work with um, elementary school kids in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, in the one right next to with the kids in the middle section, um, right where above where it says shade games, that's actually with my work with kids in the Philippines. So I've been able to sort of do a lot of theater teaching work um, with kids around the world. Um, a lot of my work does focus on high school students um, and college, students, uh, college school students, um, but I have been able to sort of just love the, I've been able to really work with um, elementary school kids, and they are the best. I think they are so snippy, they are so smart, um, but they really are very exciting and fun. Um, so a lot of that work focused around more of sort of helping them to understand sort of larger global issues, right? So when we talk about sort of diversity and inclusion, how does that, how do you make that sort of understandable to a student? You do that through art, you do that through play-based activities. So a lot of those sort of um, jobs and positions really allowed me to sort of use more play focused activities to really sort of present an idea and get those children to sort of conceptualize it. Um, with that, I also do directing. I also do playwriting. Um, in the picture underneath where it says Shade Games and Evil, those are two spec scripts that I wrote. In spec scripts um, in sort of the entertainment or television industry are sort of like not a full script, but they're the breakdown of the show. Right, so there you have the full storyline. What the storyline is about. Unfortunately, those shows did not get picked up, but it's okay because I can tell you what it's about since it didn't get picked up. Um, but Shade Games was a TV show that I wrote um, in collaboration with MTV. I worked a little bit with MTV over the past. Um, I worked on Teen Wolf. I worked on a sort of um, updated version of Heather's, which was on the Paramount Network. Um, I was able to work on The Real World for a little bit. Um, then I was also able to work on a show called Video Love, um, which was very exciting. Um, but Shade Games was very much a sort of, it's like The Office meets Friends, but like it's very much like in a space of sort of college. It was a weird, I actually don't really remember the full breakdown, which is kind of bad. I wrote that script like two years ago, <laughs> um, but that was very exciting. And then Evil was a sort of spec script that I wrote, which sort of took the Once Upon a Time format of sort of um, storybook characters in the real world, and it focused it mostly on villains, um, so Disney villains. So it was very exciting. I really enjoyed that project. Um, unfortunately, it was not picked up, so I stopped working on it. Um, the picture in the top left corner is actually from my, my play that I did in New York on Broadway. Um, and if you see a few of those actors there, um, a few of them at the time were in other Broadway productions. They're also on some TV shows at the time, so it was really great to work with them. Um, and that shows with the acting companies. So that was with 
Patty Lapone's original acting company that she started when she graduated. Um, so it was really great to work with them, really great to sort of meet them um, as well. Um, but that show is focused more on racism, right, and how we conceptualize racism and sort of the deaths of African Americans in the U.S. Um, and how that relates to assassination, how that relates to Malcolm X, how that relates to sort of Martin Luther King. Um, so it was a very short piece and it was interview focused. Um, so I got to interview tons of my friends, tons of people that I love, people that I know, um, and we got, really got to put a show together, which was really great. Um, right next to that, you see another picture of me. This is when I directed a show at my alma mater called um, The Complete Works of William Shakespeare. If you've heard of it, it's a great show. If you haven't heard of it, it's a great show. <laughs> um, but it's really, really funny. It's a really, um, sh it's a show that sort of compiles all of Shakespeare's works and it just like lets it go on the stage. So it's a really fun show to direct. Um, it was really exciting to direct. It was the first show I've ever directed. Um, I then went on to direct a show in the Philippines for a little bit. Um, I built a program with um, some students and some um, youth from the ages of 8 to 18 who were sexually trafficked. So they were girls, um, but we built a sort of theater camp around sort of that same model of being able to sort of tell your story, break down stigma, but also tell it in a way uh, that gets other people to understand your perspective. Then the final picture right underneath that is from a TV show that I had um, that has since been canceled um, and is no longer active. Um, but it was called The Weekly Show with TNA. I hosted it with um, one of my good friends at the time. Um, and we talked to artists in the Baltimore and Maryland community. Um, and that is actually when I went back to um, my high school and I got to interview um, an artist there and sort of talk about their production of The Little Mermaid at the time, which was a very good show. So that's a little bit about me. That's a little bit about all the work that I've done. Um, I definitely always will continue to do sort of play-based activities, art activities and all of my facilitation. I think it's such a great avenue. It's so easy to connect over music, even if you don't know someone else's language. You can sort of play a song and connect um, over sort of the music or the sort of the vibes that the song gives, like BTS. I don't speak Kore uh, Korean, but I love the music. <laughs> so it's still something that I find very relatable. Um, which, you know, you can have sort of a, a musician like that on your own. So that's a little bit about me. I don't know if Muhammad or Indonia are back on just yet. Mikey, do you know? I don't see them here yet. I'm so sorry about all these internet issues. Um, I think they're both trying to join from their phones. Um, so hopefully that will work out. In the meantime, though, Eris, thank you so much for sharing a little bit about your background. It's so interesting to hear about and really inspiring. Um, I'm curious to hear a little bit more from our participants today about your, your experiences um, in art and the arts and also what you want to get out of today's event, why, why you joined today and what you want to learn. Um, so if you can share a little bit more in the chat box um, or raise your hand and unmute yourselves, we would love to hear from you. Yes. Also, if you have any questions, <laughs> I can also answer any questions as well. Hi there. Yes. Um, I thought that I would share a little bit about, about myself and my background briefly and what I hope to get out of today. Um, my name is Sophia. Like I said, I'm a Yes Abroad alumna, but I'm also fortunate enough to work here at Amadis Tunisia with current and former Yes students. Um, and so I, I know Mohammed personally, actually, and I'm, I was really excited to see that he was on this call. He's one of our YES alumni here. Um, so I work here in the American Corner, Tunis, which is an American cultural center based out of the US Embassy. Um, and we have lots of free activities um, kind of promoting things like social entrepreneurship, creative expression um, among youth and among actually anybody who attends our events. Um, and so I'm hoping to get, um, among other things, just on a personal level, I'm hoping to get some inspiration for future act activities and programs that we can host at the American Corner that encourage our patrons, among whom are lots of YES alumni, to um, express themselves and kind of their dreams for social change through the arts. I love it. Thank you for sharing, Sophia. We have two great activities. That will definitely be something you can take back to your community. Awesome. Hello, Mohammed. Welcome back. We're just taking, um, allowing some time for people to sort of share what they hope to get from today um, and what their background is in arts. 
Awesome. All right. Does anyone else want to share? Feel free to type in the chat or to raise your hand and unmute. Painter, okay, most can enjoy fine arts. Global community, yeah. So is that the intersection of art and social change, but also how art and social change can intersect with the, yes, global alumni community, Helena? I wanna make sure that I'm understanding it correctly. Also, if I pronounce your name wrong, let me know, because I'll get it right. I promise. <laughs> so while people are still typing and sharing their thoughts in the chat, Mohammed, let's um, hear from you about your background and your experiences implementing your community projects. Sure, yeah. Um, I guess we could, yeah, all right. So hi everyone, I'm Hamda Fresh. I'm from uh, Benzerk, which is the northernmost city in Africa. It's located in Tunisia. Uh, I apologize for the recent uh, electricity cut. That's just part of what we have to deal with here in Tunisia during the very, very hot summers. So I'm a media and communications and political studies student at the American University of Beirut. Uh, my interest in the arts really started at the age of seven when I took my very first music lesson here in a private conservatory for the arts. Um, I continued to take music lessons until the age of 14. I played the violin, I joined the choir, and that's really where I fell in love with art, music, and the power that it has to uh, change lives and to communicate across borders, across languages, and across cultures. A few years after, I went on exchange with the YES program in 2017. I was uh, placed in uh, West Virginia at Bridgeport High School, and I did a whole lot of theater there uh, because I was placed with my theater teacher, and the entire family was kind of involved in, uh, in uh, our high school's theater. Uh, my host dad was my theater teacher. His wife did costuming for the theater. His sister was the director. So there was really no chance I couldn't be involved in the theater. It was just part of their daily lives. And I honestly fell in love with it. I wanted to do as much theater as possible. I joined Bridgeport High School Theater, did two musicals there, both fall and spring. I also joined Troop 7549, which is the competitive theater troupe at my high school. Um, I was part of their one act that year, which uh, competed uh, re and won regionals then one state, and then we made it all the way to the International Thespian Festival that year. And I also had a very brief experience in theater stage management for kids at Vintage LLC uh, that year. So needless to say, that year was mostly dedicated to theater. Every single uh, bit of time that I had, I was either engaging in theater, both on stage and backstage, and I truly fell in love with it. When I went back home, in 2018, I didn't want to stop that. So I joined Le Majestique, which is a local community theater. I trained there for a year. And then I kind of transitioned uh, into doing work with Pico de Teatro de Vicerta, which is also a theatrical training space that recently opened here in, in uh, Benzert. I did a couple of plays here and there. and I did a couple of short movies here and there. And I also joined the place as a community management intern. And that's when I really discovered the um, changing power of theater because I was able to peek behind the scenes and I was able to see how the community rallied around theater. The parents uh, showed up for their kids. They were such an integral part of us being able to fund and create our plays. So the space, Pico de Teatro, really brought parents from different cultural backgrounds, different educational backgrounds, just from different ways of living together around this powerful form of art. Also, the pieces of theater that we created at Pico de Teatro were um, mainly destined to tackle uh, taboo or tough to tackle topics here in uh, Benzert, whether that was 
women's rights, whether that was um, religion, whether that was the LGBTQ plus community, we're in Pride Month, yay. Uh, all these like tough topics that we couldn't really um, tackle outside of the safe space that was theater were, were suddenly accessible to us. So those were kind of the two things that um, made me realize how strong of a medium it is. It's the power to rally the community together and how much accessibility it gives us when it comes to tackling um, tough topics. And then I kind of switched gears a little bit. I actually wrote my college essays, like my college application essays about theater because I was so in love with the arts and I was sure I wanted to be a theater major. When I applied to uh, the MEPI program, I wrote my three essays about theater and then I got into AUB and there wasn't a theater major. So I had to switch gears a little bit and I became a media and communications major. And um, that's when I kind of began a little bit to discover my passion for writing. It was actually an interesting process because I've always been a writer in a way. Um, and, you know, in a, a writer in the sense that, you know, I wrote like cringy Wattpad stories at the age of 16. I know we've all written or read them. But then in 2019, my last year of high school, I assumed the editor-in-chief position of our high school's magazine, Youth League magazine. And I discovered that I actually have uh, a talent for writing beyond, you know, short uh, stories and whatnot. So when I actually entered the American University of Beirut and became a media student, I immediately joined AUB's official student publication, which is Outlook Magazine, and I've been with them ever since. I started out as a staff writer, became a junior editor, um, you know, in like the matter of a semester. And then this year I assumed uh, the position of senior editor. And it's interesting because at first I didn't think I would fall in love with another uh, artistic medium the same way I fell in love with theater, but I did. To me, writing is also a form of art. I think it's a science and an art. And I realized that, you know, there's so much we can do with journalism and so much we can do with writing that can also rally communities together and also help us um, address tough topics the same way I was able to do through theater. So for the past few years, I've been more and more focused on writing. You can find my work under the campus section of Outlook Magazine, or I also have a personal medium blog where I kind of write pieces that don't really fit into any of these formal publication boxes, but I just kind of like to share them with the world, short stories, poetry, whatever uh, really uh, comes to mind at the moment. So and that, that's where you can see my work if you're interested. And that's me in a nutshell. My hobbies, I love writing, fiction, nonfiction, I love theater. I'm also a huge TV and film nerd. And I love MUN, Maldi United Nations debate. So yeah, I'm very excited to have you guys here with us today. I'm very excited to talk more about art and how we can harness art to create social change. And I'm also very, very excited to hear about your stories and your journeys with art. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for sharing a little bit about your background and your experiences, um, especially how you were so engaged in the arts and especially theater on your, your exchange year. Um, I'm sure other YES students have had similar experiences. Um, so I don't think that Dunya is able to join us. I think she's really struggling with her internet today, which is unfortunate. Um, but before we move into our first uh, breakout room activity, does anyone have questions for Aris or Mohammed? Um, any, any comments, questions, thoughts um, about their experiences and backgrounds before we move on? Well, keep thinking. If you have any questions, feel free to share them in the chat throughout the event. Um, I really love hearing all of your, your experiences in the chat. Thanks for, for sharing that. This is really great to read. Um, so I think we can move into our first breakout room activity. Eris or Mohammed, um, if one of you want to kind of share what we're gonna do and um, what the participants should expect. Yeah, sure. So the first activity, as promised, you're gonna be writing a poem, but you're not gonna be writing a poem by yourself, which is 
I find a little bit liberating because I'm not a good poem writer. Um, you're be writing a poem together, and the poem is actually going to be a We Are poem. Um, and Mikey, should I share my screen? Um, yes, I can. I have the uh, the form up actually. So oh, perfect. Really okay. Quick. Yes. Okay. This is correct. Yeah. Thank you. So. The We Are poem is an activity that actually stems from using cultural strategy. Um, and using cultural strategy is really pretty much the basics of it, is using arts, using sort of culture to sort of create cultural shifts or to create waves within sort of cultural sort of institutions, but also within societies, right? So the most, if you think back to a movement that you really enjoy, um, if we're talking about the sort of LGBTQ plus movement, um, a huge cultural shift for that is representation, right? So seeing more characters on TV and movies that sort of represent that community creates cultural shifts, right? So we remember culture more than we actually remember laws or policies, right? We remember music, remember movies, TV shows. Um, so this poem sort of builds on that activity or that sort of idea by having you write a poem that is just focused on your culture, right? So you're going to be coming together in groups of five to 10 people and we're gonna give you about eight to 10 minutes, depending, um, to write a poem. So the only rule is that every line has to start off with the words, we are, right? So if you're a group of people, what are you? You can discuss that. Um, each person in the group should contribute at least one statement, right? Which is really, really important because you wanna make sure that everyone in the group is represented in the poem. Um, after that, statements can really include where you're from, so you can say, we are from the US, we're from Sierra Leone, we're from Morocco. Um, it can be ethnically, sort of religiously, right? If you want to sort of put that identity in the poem. Um, it can be memories. Maybe we are people that like eating hot dogs. <laughs> Maybe we are people that like eating sort of corn dogs, right? It can be some of your favorite memories. Um, it can also include interests or hobbies. We are K-pop lovers, we are lovers of hip hop dance, um, mottos, any favorite phrases, any quotes that you have, family traditions and customs as well. Um, so I think that's always a fun one. And then whatever else defines who you are, right? So really sort of think about your background, where you come from, where sort of what culture you grew up, um, grew up in, and really pull from those sort of, um, sort of spaces. Then after those eight minutes or eight to 10 minutes, we'll come back and we'll look at each other's poems. The great thing about this is that you can actually type in the chat box. Um, so feel free to tap, um, type in the chat when you go into your breakout rooms. And if you need some inspiration, we do have some sample poems for you. So the first one is one um, that I was able to do sort of last year. And then the second one is actually one that I was able to do with youth um, from a, an arts program that I sort of uh, developed and created. Um, which is really fun. So the sample poem number two, I like a little bit more because I think my first one isn't that good. <laughs> um, but the number two is just says we are the generation of change makers, right? So they really came together to sort of discuss what they, so Generation Z, <laughs> as they call themselves, um, is sort of discuss that a little bit. Um, and then they sort of broke it down. They sort of looked artistically at who they are, but also they looked at um, sort of what they took pride in, their identity, sort of what they love to do. Um, as you can see, we are Moroccans and Americans. This is a program that I did with uh, Morocco students, which is really fun. Um, so feel free. Yes, that's all of the instructions I'm going to give you. <laughs> and I'll share this um, in the chat real quick, this uh, document. So you all have access to it. Um, if you'd like to look at these examples while you're in your breakout rooms, and I will open the breakout groups right now. 